when we're talking about a 2D array, one of the things we want to really remember is when in Java, a 2D array itself is really just an array of arrays. And so when I want to extract out a information from the array, you know, I can extract out an entire row at a time by doing the name of the array, sub whatever, because each row I'm talking about is stored here in the zeroth value of that array name. So array name sub zero uh, gives me the zeroth array, array name sub one, sub two, sub three, sub n, whatever. However, if I want to be able to take out a column's worth of data out of the array, specified by the column index that we're working with, we have to actually come up with a way to extract that out manually. And so that means we have to actually create a method to do so because it needs something that actually, to, it's work that we have to do to call and retrieve that information. To do so, we've got to go ahead and go create a method that will work with this. And this is something we generally want to do inside the class that's going to be working with or interacting with that array, or one that's going to be using it as from somewhere else. So it's going to be a public method because we're going to be calling this information externally. The type that we're storing inside, that is going to return a type array. Now this type right here could be whatever type you're having. This could be a lowercase, like a primitive, like an int, an, a char, a boolean, a double, etc. Or it could be an object type, because whatever type you're storing inside the array, that's what you're going to be extracting out of that right here. And so the type array is the return type of the method. I have the extremely creative name of get column, because we're extracting out a column's worth of information. Now, when we're talking about extracting a column's worth of information, we need to know which column we're working with. So our first parameter we'll be working with right here is int index. Now, if this is only internal to an existing thing that only has to retrieve one value, that can be the end of our uh, method signature right here, and that's all we have to do. However, perhaps we don't have a data member or a local variable we have access to, and so we want to have a second parameter a lot of the time for this. We're going to have a type 2D array named source because we want to actually get the information from that that we're working with, and we can send that in here to this and have it as a reference that we work with inside the actual block of code for our method body, so we can have the logic attached to it. The first step we want to do, and our last step are the same, we want to declare an array of the type we're working with, and I'm going to give it the creative name again of column right here, and last name will be return the column. When I create that column, it's a new type, whatever the type again I'm matching right here and right here, because that's what I'm taking out of the array itself, so that variable type is going to match that across it. And it's going to be of source.length and size. So I want to have as many rows that are inside that right there. So that's where source.length comes in because dot .length returns the number of rows inside a 2D array. The next step we have to do is we have to iterate over every single step. Now, when we're, since we're going over every single row, you'd think a for each loop would be great. It would. However, when we're talking about a for each loop, though, we have to have an index we're working with right here. And we want to make sure we extract those values appropriately. So we're going to use a standard for loop right here. So for int row equals 0 row is less than column.length and row++, plus plus. again, specifying the order we're working with this, and also we could possibly go backwards if we wanted to. And then inside there, column sub row, that index variable we're working with, and that's, again, why we're using the regular for loop on this, and then equals source sub row sub index, matching that column right here to the parameter supplied above. And that will go through and extract out every value that's inside the original 2D array at that index for each column inside that and store it in that new array that we're creating right here. Once that iteration is done, of course, we go ahead and return our column right there. Now, before we finish off, there's a couple things we want to remind ourselves about. If this type right here happens to be a primitive type, each of these values inside here is a duplicate copy of what's inside the array. Because whenever you're assigning from a primitive into another value, you get a copy of that value. So keep that in mind. So if you're looking to extract a column of information and you're dealing with ints or doubles or from Zara reason, a Boolean, you want to make sure that you uh, remember <clears throat> you want to make sure that you remember that those are copies of the original values. And so if you make changes to that or change to the original, it's not going to be reflected over here. However, if your type happens to be an object type, like a string, or a car, or a cool little box of ginger chewies, you, want, you will recognize that if you chew those ginger chewies or do anything with them or set them to null, that affects this array as well because objects are passed by reference, and that'll give you a reference to that as well. That's just a quick review of how we can extract a column from a 2D array and what happens with that. Thanks again, and have a great day. We'll see you later. Cheers.